The sand jump is a variation that I think everyone should try. By sending your kite forward through the wind window, it's going to pull you through the sky and this is just an awesome feeling. Next to that, it's a worthy building block for the kite loop due to the way that you need to heli loop your kite after the send. You can do them small or you can do them big. You can steer a kite really hard or you can take it soft. And this makes it ideal for all levels of riding. All you need to be able to do is do a jump and be able to heli loop and then you can start trying this. Later on, you can also build it out by doing a sand jump with a double front roll, as you can see in this video, or by simply adding a one footer or even a board off. The best conditions are ranging from taking a kite from seven to 11 square meters, depending on your weight, and about 20 to 28 knots. So if everything lines up and you're ready, let's start off with a small sand jump. Ride in with medium to high speed on a crosswind course as you would for a normal jump. Spot your takeoff, steer a kite up, carve towards the wind and pop off the water. Make a guess on the height you'll reach and start pulling with your front hand at 80% of the jump height, steering your kite towards 11. Just before your kite reaches 11, you park the kite with some steering input from the right hand. Depending on the jump height, this is also the moment where you initiate a heli loop with the right hand around 12. Make sure your board points downwind so you can follow the power of the kite and slowly carve back towards a crosswind course. When we look at the sand jump, we can identify four different parts. We start with the classic jump to get the height. Shortly before the apex of the jump, it gets more interesting where we send the kite forward and this is going to accelerate us through the sky. After that, we get the recovery phase where the kite needs to recover towards 12 o'clock in order to catch you and slow you down. And then comes the landing. And this is where most people make the mistakes. The, the landing will be done with a heli loop, but there are very different ways to do the heli loop and some will put you down softer than the other. So what are the key points of the small sand jump? You want to initiate the sand just before the apex of your jump, so your kite still has power and pulls you forward. After that, you'll still have enough time for the recovery and a soft landing. This is where we get to point two. Don't heli loop your kite too early. Let that kite recover till at least 12 o'clock or over your head and preferably even further. If you let it recover to behind you, the kite will actually slow you down and you'll have a softer, less of a high speed landing. For sure you don't want to try this in 30 plus knots on a seven square meter kite fully overpowered because small kites, when they're very powered, are super quick and that makes the timing for the landing really hard. Also, the moment that it flies, that you send it through the wind window is gonna be way more aggressive with way more pull and that might scare you a little bit. So ideally, you're gonna be riding in 20 to 28 knots, depending on your skill level, and you're gonna be riding a seven to 10 meter kite. The heavier riders will be riding at the bigger sizes where the lighter riders will be on the smaller sizes. The type of kite that you're going to be riding also makes a very big difference. A bow-shaped kite, like the Core XR7, Duotone Rebel, North Orbit, or Ozone Edge, are gonna make the landing a lot easier because by pulling down the bar, you already get power. So a bow kite is obviously easier, but a C-shaped kite, like the Core Nexus 3, for instance, is also still a very fun kite to do it on. And I actually prefer it on these kites because they give a bit more of a yank when you steer the kite. Your timing for the landing needs to be more precise though, and that makes it slightly harder. Next up, we're going to have a look at a sand jump where we steer the kite a bit harder. For this, you'll need to go higher, but let's have a look at that. The start and timing remains the same, but this time we need to try and jump a lot higher because we need room for the big send. Initiate the send at 80% of your jump height and steer the kite towards 11 or even 10.30 with a very strong steering input. Correct the send with steering input from your right hand to park the kite at 11 or 11.30. Make sure to pull big heli loop around 12 for maximum lift and a soft landing. If you pulled your loop a little bit too early like I did, you can make the radius bigger so the kite takes more time to complete the loop and puts you down softer. When we look at the sand jump from a different angle, 
we can really see that the kite accelerates us forward during descent. This is followed by a big drop like that after a kite loop. It's very important to catch this with a heli loop that flies around 12 to slow you down. Key points for the big sand jump. Just like before, you want to initiate the sand just before the apex of your jump so your kite has power and accelerates you through the sky. For the recovery phase, it's very important to park your kite at either 11 or 1 o'clock and leave it there during the recovery phase. You can push your bar out a little bit so the kite recovers quicker and rises quicker in the wind window. And then the last part that's very important is you want to heli loop around 12. If you let your kite sneak back towards 12 o'clock during the recovery phase, you won't be able to loop it around 12 where it will generate the most lift and slow you down. So very important, park that kite at 11 or 1 and heli loop around 12 o'clock. Next up, let's look at some of the biggest mistakes I see people do when they try sand jump. Not steering a kite around 12 o'clock is probably the biggest mistake you can make. In this video you can see that during the recovery I steer my kite straight back towards 12 and initiate my heli loop from there resulting in a crash. Most lifts can be found around 12 o'clock and if I initiate my loop from 12 I'll steer it away to the side of the wind window resulting in a drop, no lift and probably a crash. So remember, heli loop around 12. The second mistake I often see is that people do not let the bar out for the recovery phase. If you keep your bar pulled in, your kite might want to stall or you might choke your kite, resulting in less quick of a recovery time and a kite that stays in front of you. So remember, let your bar out a little bit so the kite can fly behind you and then initiate your heli loop from there. The third mistake is not sticking with the plan. If you all of a sudden get a gust, don't change your kite movements Stick with the plan. Do the same kite movements, just change your timing. Let it sit around 11 or 1 o'clock a bit longer before initiating your down loop, for instance. But what do you actually have to do with the bar? Because there are four different phases and they all have a different bar positioning. So let's look at that. During the jump, you want to keep your bar down for maximum lift power resulting in height. After that, during the descent, we still want to keep that bar down to get that nice acceleration forward. But that's when things start changing. When the descent turns into a recovery phase, that's actually when you want to let your bar out for about a quarter. Like that, the kite will recover a lot quicker and rise faster in the wind window. For the landing, we want to pull the bar down again because we want maximum lift during the landing to slow us down and put us down softly. With that, I pretty much told you everything I know about the sand jump and it's time to give it a try for yourself. If you want to learn any of the sand jump variations, just drop them down in the comments, like the sand jump with a double front roll or a sand jump board off, sand jump one footer. These are all possibilities and if you like, I can definitely make a video about that. Until that time, subscribe for more upcoming videos. Like the video, this will really help out the algorithms and I'll see you on the next one.